Hi, my name is Jason Schweigert, and I am an Acquisition Geophysicist at BJV Design Inc. And today I'd like to talk about some basic terminology uh, for those of us out there that are not familiar with seismic acquisition and the geometries involved. So first off we'll start by looking at a 3D uh, seismic grid, an orthogonal one. You have red circles and those are source points. You have blue squares and those are receiver points. Now the distance between each of those red circles is the shock interval. The distance between each of the blue squares is the receiver interval. Now you can see there are no uh, linear lines, the sources and the receivers. And those are source lines and receiver lines. So therefore the distance between each of those lines respectively are source line spacing and in the case of the receiver lines, receiver line spacing. Um, that's the fundamentals and uh, the different spacings involved in the geometry. Now another term you might hear is something called inline and crossline. Now typically in seismic acquisition, the inline is the direction of the receiver lines. And for, in the case of an orthogonal geometry, the cross line direction is a dis direction of the sources. But I think it's important to point out there are many geometries that are not orthogonal. So it's a better rule of thumb for cross line in, in, in a direction is saying that is, it is perpendicular to the receiver line direction. Now the next thing I'd like to talk about is a recording patch. Now that in the diagram I have beside me here, it's showing light blue receiver square in the middle of the 3D geometry. That is your recording patch. And what that is, is the channels or receivers that are turned on and listening to uh, when the sources are taken. Now in this case, the source being taken is there's a yellow point right in the center of that grid. And although there's many iterations of that's the fundamental basics of what a recording patch is. Uh, and it's the minimum channels required to be recorded by the acquisition crew. <clears throat> and next, I want to take it one step further and talk about CDPs. Now, CDPs are common depth points. And in the di diagram that I have shown here, we have a 2D example on the left, a 3D example on the right. What you can see here on the left with a 2D example, red flags as source points, blue squares as receiver points. And you can see rays where the energy is traveling between a sort given source and a receiver. And they all happen to line up in the same location in the subsurface. That is called your CDP point. It's a point that is actually being imaged in the subsurface. Now, if you project that up to the surface, that's your CMP. That's a point that's on physically on the, on the surface of the earth and is only relevant for flat ge geologies. Now you can see that it gets much more complicated on the right hand side when you look at 3Ds. And a little another point I like to point out is you can see that there are three source receiver pairs on that 2D case. But as you see in the 3D it gets more, much more complicated like I just mentioned. And if we look at this new 3D grid here, you can see that we have to organize things in a proper fashion. And we do that through something called a bin grid. And a bin grid and a nat like a natural bin grid is described as half the shot interval by half the receiver interval. Now if you look you can see how that all lines up and it fits nicely in the grid and it allows us to organize the points for processing because um, it's pretty tough well it, it's, it makes it more it makes it more easier to organize it that way. Now if you look at the next um, diagram you can see we're looking in and we're zooming in to a little area where we see multiple bins with a single CDP point in the center of each bin. Now that doesn't mean there's just one source receiver pair at each of those locations, but what it does mean is there's multiple source receiver pairs and they end up having the same exact uh, physical location in the subsurface. Now this is so happens to be a particular theoretical type of geometry called focused, uh, a focused uh, orthogonal geometry. Now there are many other way, other types of CDP scatter, this is called, where we get away from a single point in a bin. Uh, another really common one is uh, a double stagger or where we have a two line stagger where we have four CDP points in the center of each bin. Another common one 
is a triple stagger, a three line stagger, where we have three, or sorry, three by three, so nine CPP points in the center of each pin. And that's where we start in a theoretical sense to make these kind of CDP scatters happen. But in the reality of real world, uh, we're always having to move points based on where we can put them in, in on the surface of, of the earth, depending on uh, obstructions and farms and water and environmental issues and all the kind of things that uh, we deal with in the real world. You end up getting more of a, like this one, a random CDP scatter. And that's what we all... I would say more often we see than not. But you can also do that um, when you have a perfect location. You can, If you want CDP scatter, you can actually invoke an algorithm to do fine little shifts in your grid or in your source and receiver points to get that random uh, um, distribution. Now the next thing I'd like to talk about is fold. Now, if you remember me talking about previously about there being three source receiver pairs that resulted in uh, resulted in uh, one CDP location. Now we have a diagram in the 3D sense where we have five source receiver pairs that all have the same CDP point location. Now what that means is we have five fold because we have five different source receiver pairs that are combining together imaging the same physical location. Now that is considered fold. Now, if we just take this another step further, and what does that mean in real data? Well, if we look at this diagram here, you can see four gathers on the right and one stack set of traces on the left. We'll get into the details of that. Now, each of those CDP gathers represent one physical local location in the subsurface, and they're all different source receiver pairs that same, have the same uh, CDP location. So each of those traces represents one source receiver pair. Now what we can do is we can take in one gather, we can sum them and average them out, and that's called a stack, where we get create all those traces and make one, one trace. So you can see the CDP gather one is equal to the first the stack, or this is the first trace on the left, and you see there's four traces. Now what I want to point out here is you can look the traces on the right look a lot noisier and uh, you can see they don't look as clean as the traces on the left. Well, that's your signal to noise ratio. When you stack, you end up amplifying the signal, reducing the noise, called the power of the stack, because we actually improve the signal to noise ratio by stacking. Now, lastly, I want to touch on one more thing with fold, and that is full fold area versus fold paper. Now, in the case of this diagram I'm showing you here, the red area is our full fold area. That's where we have full coverage, full uh, offset asthma statistics for that particular location. And you have an area on the outside where we're building fold. That's called the fold taper. Now, how that is relevant is if you're going to acquire seismic and you want a cer certain area you need imaged, you're going to have to acquire a slightly larger area so that you can properly image your primary area of interest. Now we're not including migration aperture at this point. That's a topic for another day, but that's the basic fundamental thing is that we need to acquire a larger area than uh, what you want to image. Now, I hope that provided you a little bit of insight and I hope you uh, got a little bit out of that. If you have any questions, comments, or like this to me uh, discuss some other uh, topics or terminology related to seismic survey design and acquisition, I'd be happy to send me a message, leave a comment below. Thank you for watching and have a great day.